Hey guys, welcome to our brand new series, Markets by 1% Club, where we do a deep dive analysis on stock market investments. So we have Shashank Kudupa with us. Shashank Hi. is coming on the channel for the second time after the huge success that we had in our maiden episode. Shashank, yeah. thank you so much for agreeing to do this again. Awesome. On today's episode, we have a very simple problem. So Shashank, <laughs> if I'm just starting my investing journey in the stock market okay. and I'm starting out with 50,000 rupees in today's market, what are those top three stocks that you would invest in okay. to get it started? And why? Okay. For long-term investing. First, the way I would attack this, if I had to look at making a 50,000 uh, portfolio, I would do a concentrated portfolio, not a very diversified portfolio, right? Concentrated means pick few stocks and just invest in those baskets. Now for this video, I'm not going to show 10 or 15 stocks. I'll talk about maybe three picks that I would choose, which I would really like, right? If I had to invest today. So the first company that I would like to look at is a company called KPIT. KPIT. Now, KPIT. So okay. KPIT is a tech company, right? IT company. But why I like them over multiple different IT companies is one, they're in the mid cap range, mid cap to large cap range. So they're not as big as the TCS and the Infosys, but they're one of the fastest growers in this space. Number okay. one. Number two, they are this company that is also investing heavily into future technology. But what do they do? It's not a well-known company. What does KPIT? So KPIT is into IT and IT services. So like Infosys and Accenture yes. of the world. But the only difference with KPIT is KPIT caters to the automobile segment. They do a lot of helping with design IT softwares for the EV market, for the two-wheeler market, four-wheeler market. That's what they do. So, so it's growing on, on top of the EV market, which is growing. Not just EV, automobile sector. So the immediate competition to this is a company called Tata Alexi. Right? Okay. So Tata Alexi, which did like a huge run-up. So right. KPIT and Tata Alexi are in the same level, same playing field. So what exactly is happening in the macroeconomic point of view hmm. due to which these companies are growing so fast? Okay. So last few years, they were growing very fast because the whole industry was moving very well. Like if you saw in India, we saw a lot of sales picking up. Uh, if you saw Tesla in US, it was picking up there as well. Why? Because we had that liquidity fueled bull run, interest rates were low, everyone could go buy a car. Mm. And when more cars come into the picture, more R&D is required, how to make it more beautiful, how to make the software better. So there KPIT comes into all of this. Right? They use digital solutions, AI, embedded solutions, all of that is catered to this. And they have been growing very fast. Right? How fast? Uh, almost, I think 50-60% is what they've grown. I think their uh, top line growth has gone up by 34% year on year and their profit growth has been 61% in the last three years, right? Which is very good for an IT company hmm. because IT companies, once you hit like a ceiling, you grow slightly so 10-12% a year, but mid cap companies grow faster because they're catering to a particular niche, right? Hmm. Everyone has their own key domain. So mid cap means a company from 100th rank to 250th rank. Yes, in not in size. those. This guy is, I think, less than 1 lakh crore. Market cap wise, there are a lot of companies above 1 lakh crore. I look at them as like the big companies. Mm. They're not by the actual definition of mid cap. These guys have scope to grow. Mm. That means if this guy keeps growing at this rate, he can become a multi-bagger company. So for tomorrow. example, what is the market cap of, let's say, Infosys? I think Infosys is quite big. I think they're number two right now in the entire IT space and okay. TCS is still the king at number one. Got it. Yeah. Got it. And what is this revenue split, geographic split? Yes. So KPIT is a company that works really well in the foreign market, like all IT companies. Mm. Because in India, yes, you can go bill an Indian customer. You're going to get paid peanuts only for that, right? Correct. But if you go bill an international customer, even though you're getting slightly more, which is good for you, the dollar averaging, you make a lot of money. The price parity makes you a winner. Correct. And if they have to do R&D in their own city or in their own country, it would be far more expensive. So KPIT, as you can see, most of the revenue comes from Europe and it comes from US, 40% from Europe, 22% from US and almost rest of the world is 37%. So India is not even there in that. It might be a very small portion. Rest of the world includes India, but it'll be like a kuti percentage, right? Mm. Compared to US and Europe is 60% of the business. And yeah. Europe is where most of the car manufacturing companies are from, yeah. not US, right? So as you see, it is very big. And mm. what their key growth triggers in the last few years was the EV growth trigger. And one thing that they have done really well is invest in the future. Right? So now new technology in the battery space is called sodium ion, not lithium ion, right? Yes, we found mines in different part of India. We're very happy about it. Mm. But as you know, battery technology is an ever evolving space. How do we optimize the battery, right? So sodium ion has come out as the next new alternative, which is also like, you know, you don't have to get lithium all the time because yeah. lithium is finite, right? Sodium you can get. So already Reliance has invested in this. They bought a company called Faradion. Now we see that 
uh, this guy has already started doing research into sodium ion technology. Who KPI? KPI. They are starting research. They are starting research. So they are primarily like a R and D company, and now they are yes. researching on this. Yes. Yeah. So tomorrow, if sodium ion gets ready and the battery technology gets ready, this guy is like, I have the software. What do you want? Oh. So you are already ready right now, right? So, so he is building the software for those. He builds the software. He does R and D for it. He does the digital design solutions for it. Everything around it, right? For mm. so, if a car manufacturing company comes and wants a solution, this guy gives the end-to-end -end solution to them, like a structuring, mm. like a consultant as well, mm. right? So they focus a lot on the car tech and the software for the car. They don't design cars. They don't build cars, but they do everything around making the car look good and making the software look good. Got so it. that is what they do. And the key growth trigger of this company is they keep winning orders. What right? does that mean, winning orders? So let's say I have a client in Europe. Right now, I'm getting some amount of money from that client every year. The only way I can get more and more revenue is if I find more clients in Europe or in US or in the rest of the world who will not use another company but maybe use me because I'm really good at what I do. Hmm. Like Tata and this guy are Indian players, hmm. but obviously in the world there are multiple different players. But we have the cost advantage. Yeah. Now you either go to China or you come to us. But IT is known for Indian brains. Like India and IT are like going together, right? Hmm. So Tata caters mainly to Tata companies. Also, and they do foreign. They do a lot of German companies. This guy does something similar. So this is a growth trigger. If a company is winning orders consistently, that means this company is doing well. That means this company is also looking at new age technology, and it will continue to do this. Got it. And again, everything is probably not rosy, right? Like what Never. are the uh, you know what are the things that I should be cautionary about? Like what yeah. could cause the stock price to fall for KPIT? Okay, so two two things I would say are the most important here. Number one is that, as you see, most of the revenue comes from Europe and US. Sixty percent of the revenue comes there. If tomorrow there is a recession in those parts mainly, and when recession comes, US gets hit and Europe gets hit even more, right? So if there is any recession here, IT spends in that country will reduce, and if IT spends in that country reduces, people will not spend too much on R and D. Mm. Right? They will be more conservative. This guy's existing revenue will start getting impacted. Margins will start getting affected. Number one, right? Because that concentration is so high in these foreign countries. Mm. Second, because they cater to the automotive segment, most of the revenue comes from there. So it is on the cycle. Right, automotive sector also goes in a cycle. Sometimes yeah. you have more car selling. Interest mm. rates are high. You have less car selling. So right now we saw a lot of cars being sold. Right now you will see slightly less cars, and you can see with Tata Motors already their cars selling has gone down. Mm. Right, so these type of things are. And happening. if recession comes, people spend less also on purchasing new automatically, cars. Automatically, automatically. But one thing that we're also underplaying is that the rise of two wheeler. Right, and mm. if you see the dials in two wheeler also are becoming digital. Earlier, it was yeah. that stupid kadi that you see going up yeah, and down. Yeah. Now everything is digital. Everything is coming on your phone and all of that. Right, mm. so that can be a new area that they can look into later on as well. Got it. But these are the two big risks. And yes, valuation risk is always there. This guy is always at a premium. Yeah, seventy-two P is what I checked last. This guy is always at a. Premium. What is considered as a good P? See, IT company, see, TCS is trading at 23, 24, 25, right? But but he's TCS, right? But he's also not having that level of growth. So even if I have to give little premium to a fast-growing company in this bull market scenario, 40, 45 is great because we're in a bull market. Or else that would also be high. Mm. This guy sitting at 72 means already a lot of the future growth has been factored into the PE. Mm. So in today's market, what people are doing, they're not looking at today's PE. they are automatically calculating next year's revenue next year's margin and they're saying oh by next year it will be lower p so i'll buy it today on that future so you're already discounting four quarters or one year of the entire company hmm. assuming everything will go right for the next four months uh, for your one year right so that is the problem but i would say even with today's pe or future pe it is slightly overvalued when that happens if there is something that goes wrong with the company the fall will be sharper So then, finally, what would you put your money in this company? If right? I go long term, I don't care about this. Okay. If I go ultra long term, like ten years minimum, then I don't. Care then you don't have to care. Then I don't care. I think that is a mistake that people make. They hear some stock from somebody, yes. they buy it. Yeah. Next quarter, they see it falls. Yeah. They're like they exit, and they've just lost money. There are a lot of people come and tell me, Shashank, P is or seventy, sixty. Why will I buy right now? I said, how many years are you buying? Ten years, twelve years, or one year? If you're one year, then that is high. If you're buying for ten years, you are playing on the macros, you're playing on the industry, and mm. you're playing on the company. Mm. So if there is a bad time, you double down on that company because mm. that company has proved in the past that it is a fast grower. Yeah. So, so basically, do like an SIP on that stock. Yes. Okay. Maybe don't put all the money in the stock right now. Perfect. Even if I have ten lakhs to invest today, or as you said, fifty thousand, I would not put fifty thousand today and sit down. Right now, we're at a peak. So I would start putting five thousand over six months, or ten thousand over six months, or five months. So you'll keep that money in like an arbitrage fund, and then slowly put that money. Push it across. Yes. 
Cool. Let's go to the second stock that you will yeah. pick in. I think this stock is Bajaj Finance. Now I'll tell you why Bajaj Finance. Hmm. Last two three years, Bajaj Finance not doing well. Right before that, they were doing phenomenally well. Last two three months, they've had a slowdown. So But can you first tell me what is the business of Bajaj Finance? I'll tell you. So Bajaj Finance, see, it is an NBFC, non-banking financial in a company, right? And Bajaj Finance basically does lending a lot, right? Okay. But they do lending everywhere. That's the beauty of this company. Usually, people do a lot of lending in home loans. right people will give you mortgage back loans people will give you loan for business uh, this guy does everything so he does mortgage back loans he does normal home loans he does auto so loans so like a bank on almost like a bank but he's not a bank he cannot take deposits so he has to still give out bonds or raise money from some other place or do it with his own money right and he also has different regulations which he doesn't need to follow like a bank but this guy basically lends to literally everything in the market okay. which is good because he's very well diversified and the key thing what he does is vehicle financing loans whether it's two wheeler three wheeler four wheeler this guy does vehicle loans emis right consumer guy this guy is the biggest you want electronics bajaj will always be there bajaj yeah. finance emi will always be there yeah, when you buy an electronic gadget there's a zero cost emi option this it's guy will be there yeah. yeah so this guy is there across it's not like he's focused only on one so when you're across different verticals each industry is a huge pie and he's there in everything so your business is not cyclical because it's not it's diversified cyclical. yes but again why would i invest in this what is the trigger for me to invest in this right and you also mentioned that the last two years they've not been doing good what yeah. is the reason for that so last two years uh, even though india has been growing a lot bajaj finance was not showing crazy amount of growth at that point right they had a lot of saturation happening and all of that small small issues they had margin contractions they had so it didn't grow very well in the last few years and they were also overvalued at that point because bajaj finance has been doing well in the past Baj- uh, in the past bajaj has had a good name it was slightly overvalued even if you look at today uh, it is trading at a price to book ratio of 5.9 what does that mean price to book i'll ratio? tell you so in normal companies we look at p ratio which is price to earnings meaning the stock price divided by the, the earnings per, per share now in a price to book ratio we look at the book value because why because lending companies are determined on their book net worth of the company right how much they lend versus how much they receive so that is like the p ratio of it now pb ratio just to give you a comparison hdfc is at around 2 2.5 and when it's a uh, when it goes up it's at 4 hdfc is at an all time low right now and most of the companies 2 2.5 is considered like a good range this guy because as you said he's a premium he's sitting at 5.9 his book time so for finance companies you look at the price to book you look ratio. at price to book and the last 3 years as you see he's not given any returns but doesn't mean he will not give returns in the future because okay. he is a very good uh, growth so driver so what are the growth triggers for bajaj finance so one of the biggest growth trigger is the interest rate cuts you would have heard yeah jerome powell interest rate cut is happening england has already started doing interest rate cuts we've been waiting so long interest rate yes. cut has not happened only in the country last 2 years he's only teasing us giving chavi he's like martin i'll do i'll do i'll do ah, and he doesn't, he doesn't do anything do only, yeah. so now i feel finally they've come to a point where they have to do it because of their labor market yeah. and if interest rate cut happens what happens the cost of borrowings for nbfcs go down so basically i can go and give out a bond in the market at a slightly lower rate and i will still lend to you at similar rates only so mm-hmm. my operation margins will start going up so basically when rbi reduces the interest rate yeah now as bajaj finance i can go and raise money at a lower interest yes. rate and i keep lending at the same interest rate same or slightly lower slightly but you lower. make a slight arbitrage so maybe if that. i was giving let's say a 15% interest rate loan yeah. earlier let's say i was borrowing at 10% yeah. now i can borrow at let's say 8% yes and i'm still i'm making that 2% extra yes This that 2% you will maybe reduce by 0.5 you will still make a little bit extra, extra. 1.5% you will just call the that. nim right net interest net margin. interest margin so, so that you're saying will go up for this will company. go up because the cost of borrowing goes down and if interest rate cuts happen then spending increases now you have that ah. and you have the second trigger which we are pulling that india will spend now where does india spend home loan bajaj gives right housing finance auto loans bajaj gives you want to buy new iphone bajaj gives ah. so he is a bigger winner compared to all the other players hmm. the so other when interest players, rates go down consumption goes up consumption goes up so right now the government is not reducing because inflation was high yeah now they are like inflation is controlled yes so now they'll reduce the interest rate and then people will start spending yes. and when they spend they still need loans yeah. and bajaj finance is sitting correct waiting for now you the engine take. will start again mm. right so that is why it is good and as i said if you look at like if you tell me shashank housing market will do well then i have to look at housing finance companies right then they are the key players there because this guy is across he's even in corporate sme lending he's in msme lending which is one of the biggest in india right mm. he's there also so this guy is a diversified player that's why he commands such a premium and not everyone can come in every sector and do well which mm. is one thing that he's done even biggest of the biggest banks have not done as good as what bajaj has done in the past yeah yeah 
so that's why i think my second pick would be bajaj finance awesome and what are the reasons why bajaj finance could still tank so here again one is if the interest rate cut doesn't happen hmm. right let's say us did it but india doesn't do it yeah. very rare but it might not maybe us reduced by 0.5% india only reduced by 0.25 they didn't want to start the engine that is a big issue second thing the credit risk or the liquidity risk this is i'll tell you what what if i am not able to raise a lot of money right or if my borrowings don't start coming back in the same ratio like for example bad debts happen right i take a phone and i can't pay my emi usually they are in a very good range on that point uh, if you look at bajaj housing finance they said that their net npas that means people who have not paid back their loan in nine, over 90 days delinquency they are at 0.11 wow that is that i think is the lowest of the lowest hmm. lic housing finance also is at almost 1.5 or 1.6 which is the biggest in india hmm. so this guy is the second largest and he's sitting at 0.11 this guy knows how to give money to the right kind of people exactly so salaried more little less on the self employed hmm. good credit rating so that is why i think and they're very well managed biggest advantage is they don't lie too much they if they have a slowdown they will tell you i have a slowdown so it's very similar to a tata group or a nambani yeah they reputed names reputed names that's why cool that brings us to the last stock pick that you yeah. would be making in today's market shashank what is that so assuming a long term horizon over let's say 10 years i call it the tata ev combo right okay so if you've heard about the tata ev universe uh-huh. right so they have multiple different companies that surround the ev universe right but i can't invest in all of them because not everything will do well right i had mentioned this in one of my very old videos where i will have a tata ev car the software is made by tata lexi yeah. right and i go and i want to do a charging of the car so there is a tata power charging station yeah. when the battery is made by tata chemical and then i while i'm charging i want to go have a starbucks coffee which is by tata consumer mm. so tata has built that entire universe for this mm. right but not everything will do well where i see the key growth triggers happening is one is tata motors and the second is tata power okay. this growth trigger i can see happening within the next 5 to 7 years like why why do you see something happening here but not in the other tata company i'll tell you why because tata power has this logic of going completely green so not just the charging infrastructure for ev but also there is a macro play of green energy happening so that's a double trigger that is coming into tata power and the ebitda margins on that is 30 35% which gives huge profitability for tata and the power the government is probably also giving subsidies on that lots of them like mm. cheaper land you know good electricity you're creating jobs right so you go to lower borrowing interest lower rate. borrowing interest rate uh, moratorium period like you don't pay for 6 months you pay after that mm. whereas adani is playing that game adani right? is playing the same game with his solar farm in gujarat right mm. whereas if you look at tata consumer tata chemicals yeah. chemical industry is not doing well uh, consumer is only dependent on starbucks majorly dependent on starbucks the other companies are not doing well right mm. so i think that is why tata power has a double trigger playing yeah i think nikhil kama said this in his podcast the question asked to me to him was if i have to invest 2 to 3 crores blindly in a startup today yeah what kind of startup should i focus on he said anything to do with energy transition yes anything that is moving from your combustion not your uh, traditional energy sources to uh you know green energy sources yeah. it is a huge opportunity yeah right and tata motors is a sorry, sorry tata power is a listed company which is sort of making some big moves in this energy yeah. transition and they'll never have money problems because tata tata they'll never have money problems so if you get a big order i'll fulfill it no problem mm. whereas smaller startups in the space are doing well but they have to keep raising money from random people mm. to do it this is a big daddy game this is a big daddy game and the next company with that trigger is tata motors mm. right So Tata Motors has a new demerger coming into the aspect. What okay. is a demerger? They're splitting the Tata Motor business into two different companies, which is happening very soon. One is going to be only the EV space. So it's going to be a EV company that comes out. The other one is the passenger. They have the commercial vehicles like your tractors, buses, and all the other stuff. Hmm. Now in today's market, Tata Motors both is in the same thing. Now I only want the EV part because for me that is the futuristic mm. thing. No, I'm not saying commercial vehicles tomorrow won't become EV. There are green buses coming and all of that, right? Yeah. But I want just the EV part. So once they break this passenger vehicle and then the uh, commercial vehicle aside, passenger vehicle will have the EV. I want to invest in that. Mm. So now if I'm owning Tata Motors today, in the next ten years when they demerge, I get shares of both companies. Let it play out. I would still play heavy on the passenger vehicle market because Indians are becoming rich per capita is going up we are doing a migration from two wheeler to four wheeler aspirations are going up yeah so and EV will eventually come down so that is what is playing very well for Tata Motors uh, Tata power they're doing something else called BESS which is battery energy storage which is happening right now which is a new project that India has taken up to mm. 
ensure that the consumption of uh, energy is very good right they're doing a lot of technology in this bess system and tata motor is winning there adani is also there reliance is also there jsw is also there mm. all the big players are there uh, so i am playing straight up bet on green energy and ev because i feel both of them go hand in hand tata power has double triggers ev this one has demerger plus the ev market so i would be heavily on the ev part that's why it's called the vertically integrated system yes com- they have everything Hmm. right the tata does not have to go out so their margins will always be better than everyone in the market hmm. because everything is an in house because they're not trying to profit from each other yes they're trying to create the most efficient system and nobody is putting chuna on them no so if What i go chuna, mean? chuna means uh, nama put uh-huh. it that way right i'm not fooling you like if i go to another company uh, 100 rupees product will be like 300 rupees hmm. or maybe 150 rupees if he gets it from his own company tata steel is also his tata alexi is his tata every chemical is his so they give it at bare minimum margins mm. right they will definitely make profit mm. but not overselling it to them so their margins will be always better cool so what are the reasons why this investment can go bad um again uh cyclical from the tata motors side right tata power is on competition so tata power there's so many people coming in the ev space i'm sorry in the green energy space right now and adani is currently taking up most of that yeah. tata is getting like the second and thirds uh but i feel eventually tata will be one of the top 3 players enough top 3 players if they have have for india's energy demand you know this is going to become a very big play yeah. Uh, yeah. cyclical for tata motors as you know slow down is happening then we will have again a liquidity run again people will buy more cars so mm. that is a cyclical play uh second this is a heavy capex what do i mean by heavy capex right heavy capex means for tata power to set up an energy plant it is going to take lot of money up front now they never have the money for free everything is a debt cycle correct so i have to raise at 8% 9% so there are tata power bonds or tata bonds or sometimes tcs might help a little bit or they go to your banks and pick up the loan so 8% 9% 10% will be a cost of borrowing then your project has to give you 14 15 16 17% roi right but for tata power sake the good thing is a bit as 35% in green so they can easily pay off their debt hmm. so that is one problem with this even if you talk about your uh, tata motor business hmm. you have to put manufacturing plant hmm. ev lot of r&d so it's very heavy and the last thing was the government intervention regulation hmm. again as i said regulation can come in anything hmm. uh, suddenly there increase as you know now suvs are more costlier than before right and right. when they see people are spending too much and buying too many things they come and put one 3 4% tax on it like always right hmm. uh, i think that is something that might happen here cool so all these stock uh, investments that you'll be making this is from a long term horizon 10 years minimum 10 years minimum don't look like i would not mm-hmm. look at it for 10 years and what is the kind of returns that you can expect by putting in these kind of stocks uh if i take a blended average of this i, I see the problem is last 3 years have been great right and i can't take the last 3 years average as the blended average that is the mistake that people are doing right yeah now. because they think 20 25% minimum i want if i can beat nifty over 10 years mm. and i get at least 3% or 4% alpha on nifty like if nifty is giving 13% average i want 16% from these companies i'm happy and that is possible with it is camp. possible because they're yeah. all in growth sectors that's the key right. thing right nifty 50 doesn't have all companies in growth sector some mm. are in growth some are in degrowth i want everything that is in growth mm God so nifty 50 just look at randomly the top 50 growing uh, top 50 largest companies yes. but not necessarily that all those top 50 are growing yes as per where the tide is moving see hdfc hmm. no growth itc was there for the longest time no hmm. growth hmm. right then it grew after so many years right. so but if you invest only in the high growth categories that you know will do well and yeah. there are growth triggers is very important correct then you will win growth triggers as in there is a tailwind Yes there's something that is pushing this Correct. right or else you won't see turnarounds like tata happening your suzlon did a massive mm. turnaround so many companies like for example i would not invest in uh, you know like a printing company right textile. now textile we have picked industries where the you know the market is moving in that direction yeah. so you identified those key stocks which yeah. you would put your money in today's market yeah and it's inevitable right it will move into that direction mm. acha not 10 years okay hold it for 12 years mm. eventually green energy will become a theme mm. or will become a play mm. right your ev business will become a play even if you look at uh, tech will become a play yeah. so there's no fault in these fault points mm. are not there and the companies that i like uh, one is bajaj one is tata and the only i would say non branded name is kpi but yeah. kpi has history of more than 10 years doing well hmm. so that is the only other risk i would take here cool all right guys i hope this was a very informative session by the way these are not like stock recommendations yeah. for you guys this is what shashank would do with his own money so please please do your own research the the reason why we come up with these kind of videos so that you know 
how stock market analysis happens. Like how do you actually evaluate whether a stock is a good investment or not? You don't just blindly rely on a tip from your friend and invest in it, right? We wanted you to we wanted to give you the frameworks as to how we would analyze the stock if we had to put our own hard earned money. So please do your own research. Just look at this as an educational informative video. All right, guys, if you have any other recommendations on what other stock market research videos we should be doing, please drop it in the comment section. And if you are looking to upskill yourself in the world of stock market investing, you need to attend this man's masterclass, which happens every Saturday. He comes live for three hours and teaches you everything there is to know about stock market investing. All right, guys, on that note, we'll see you in the next one.